Hey, good morning. <laughs> I see the first people joining, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so let's let's wait like two more minutes for everyone to join and I think we can start. Morning. Hey guys, good to see you here. It's it's interesting because to be honest, I was more nervous before that live stream than before uh, like a conference talk. It's the, it's the first time I'm doing this, so feels a bit weird <laughs> without seeing all the people in front of me uh, but I hope it will be fun and I'll be happy to answer all your questions about Silius and our stable release that is uh, going to happen next week <clears throat> it's, it's going good we are at our office in which as you see behind me it's our uh, it's our meeting room and obviously our entire team is watching me <laughs> in the room, in the main room. Uh, it's, it's probably yeah, a bit funny uh, for them because they can hear me through, uh, through the walls. <clears throat> Good morning. Is, is the video quality and sound okay? We, we did some testing before, as you probably noticed <laughs> um, but I think it's I think it's fine if it's lagging just let me know in the comments hey good to see you hey guys <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually quite quite nice opportunity to uh, meet still not in person some of you I've met at conferences but I think it's quite a uh, quite nice way to interact with the community compared to Slack, for example. Okay, that's perfect. Good to see you guys. Uh, one, one thing that I need to get used to is the delay, because I see myself in the video. <laughs> hey Gabby, that's, that's a good question. Yeah, so uh, 41 uh, GitHub issues, some of them are uh, fixed already or pull requests are open. Uh, we don't plan a weekend in the office, but the team is working hard. Um, yeah, don't look. <laughs> I'm trying to, but it's, it's, a bit, it, it's a bit funny with the delay, the facial, the facial expressions. Anyway, to answer your question, uh, I'm pretty calm in terms of uh, release we have just like three or four uh, bigger issues to, to resolve and we are working on them already the rest of these issues some of them are like we, we just need to verify if it's still a bug or something like that or just some small really really small fixes we, I think before uh, this week we had over 80 issues so um, I think we are going to track to release uh, stable version on Wednesday uh, and yeah if, if necessary and <laughs> this is official company announcement if necessary we will stay <laughs> a bit longer in the office and and work hard to make sure everything goes smoothly I don't hear any complaints from the um, other room so I think everyone agrees <laughs> just some laughs Okay, go and shoot some questions. Morning, hey Radu. <laughs> I'll be happy to answer them all. Um, should you send? Yeah, absolutely. That would be. Yeah, we we are having. We totally have uh, a party after the stable release. Uh, we will. Uh, we will actually um, uh, live stream the release. Uh, I, I will probably wear the tie uh, from uh, Netgun guys because I promised I will wear this uh, funny creation, uh, a bit old school tie for the release, and we will uh, live stream the whole thing. 
and then we have a party. So, uh, so, but a, a bit better idea would be if you bring uh, yourself and some six packs. So. Hey Marek, and thank you, thank you for the question. Um, so yeah, we we actually started some talks with some of our partners. Uh, I think some of them are in this live stream, and we'll be working on the teams for um, uh, the teams for uh, Celius uh, after the stable release. We actually launched last week. We launched um, kind of a marketplace. It's actually more of a like plugin and bundle listing but we also have a team section where in future we plan to publish um, to publish ready to use teams the thing with Silius is that it's more for uh, medium sized and bigger projects so usually the um, the, uh, the front end side of things is totally custom is totally custom so um, there was no such big demand for ready-to-use teams uh, for smaller uh, for smaller sites, but we definitely plan to, to expand. Especially that we have a pretty cool uh, team system that was built uh, by one of our developers, by Camille, and it supports a lot of uh, uh, a lot of features like settings or uh, team inheritance. So it's pretty powerful. Okay, uh, so Timek is. Timek is saying, telling me that there was a there was a question. Okay, <laughs> I see Camille is oh, sorry. I see Camille is um, sending some reactions. So, what motivated me to create Solus? Um, actually, I was I was pretty young when I started uh, coding Solus, and um, my mom and her sister they started a business, a cosmetic selling business. Um, they were selling these cosmetics on uh, eBay and sites similar to eBay, but they also wanted to have an online shop. So uh, at the time, I created it completely from scratch um, in PHP in my own framework, which was uh, very similar to Symfony, Symfony 1.4. Um, obviously, like every developer, I had to write my own framework, which is, of course, most of the time a bad idea. Um, but then I was uh, I was very frustrated with the fact that I need to maintain the whole code base. So the uh, the web framework itself, not only the e-commerce part, but handling requests and stuff like that. So I discovered Symfony, and uh, yeah, I rebuilt the shop on top of Symfony. Uh, by creating um, by creating PHP components, uh, PHP bundles for e-commerce, and uh, yeah, this is pretty much how Slu started. I just published it on GitHub, and there was this I think one of the first guys, crazy Sasha. He's not with us here right now, but crazy developer from Serbia, and my friend now, and he built the first Serbian shop uh, on top of these components as well. Okay, let me, I'm trying to keep up with the questions. So the next question was uh, about crude. Yeah, so obviously Salus is quite crudish, like most of the operations that you do, and unfortunately it's the case for uh, the shop as well, are crude operations. So basically adding to, to the cart is just creating new order item. And um, like uh, checkout is, actually updating the card entity with some state machine transitions. So we definitely uh, understand and see that uh, CQS and CQRS are, is the future and we like it a lot. The new shop API plugin built by uh, Wukash um, is, is using CQS, so command and query separation, and we, we love how it works. It's much better than could. So I think in the future versions we will definitely go this way, but I think it was too late in the development to introduce a busy break like that. But with Silius it's, it's very flexible. These, these actions um, in the shop are really, really straightforward and I could totally see someone implementing a plugin that transforms this into CQS uh, shop that still uses Tweak, for example. Okay, the next question. What was the most difficult part of Silius development process? Mm. Oh, it's it's been a long ride because 
I started, I think I wrote the first pieces of count around 2010. Um, but for the first four years, actually, it was very, um, <laughs> I would call it random development process because I was basically merging a lot of different uh, contributions from the community. Uh, I was working on Sidious um, in my free time over weekends and after work. It's been only since 2014 where I co-founded the agency. Uh, and this is where when I started working on Sidious full time. Um, so I think the biggest, the biggest challenge was actually building the team and also building the community around it so that there's actually some people on this live stream and our Slack channel is, is 700 people right now. So yeah, I think, I think the hardest part of the development process was, was uh, meeting and finding the right people for both team and the open source community and partners and so on. Okay, I need to scroll up. Um, I have tendency to answer uh, questions uh, quite probably. Actually, this Facebook tool is weird because I can't scroll. It forces me down. Um, yeah, so the next question was about uh, plugins. And we actually implemented recently two plugins. One is for uh, order comments. And the second one is for organization management. This is quite interesting for B2B projects. And uh, these are unfortunately uh, private plugins. We are still discussing uh, with the customer the ability to open source them. But basically we solved uh, the issues with extending models and repositories with, uh, with, uh, with traits. So it's not perfect, but at the same time, I think it fits into the, uh, the framework concept of Silius. So uh, you have, uh, it's not like click to install, uh, click to install um, plugins like with uh, WooCommerce, for example, it's a bit, uh, it's, it requires you as a developer to actually write some code. And I think it's uh, it's proper solution for Silius where you have full control over what your models are using. So basically if you want to extend, if your plugin wants to extend Silius product model with some fields, you either create a new model with a relation or you just provide a trait. And during the installation process, you basically, um, you basically add the trait to your custom model. This way we can ensure that, um, this way we can ensure that um, the plugins are compatible with uh, each other. And uh, Magda is working on reorganizing our documentation as we speak because we currently have this little duplication between customization guide and the plugin guide. Basically, all the customization methods that you use um, in your everyday development with Silius are possible to do with, um, are possible to, uh, to do with plugins. So we just want to reorganize the, the documentation so it's uh, more visible. Okay, <laughs> Mikawa, I think, I think your question is best answered with your meme that you posted on PHPRs. So, uh, I'm, I don't want to go into, into trolling. Mm, okay, okay, let me find the next question. Are you aware of ambassadors or big well-known projects that could promote the popularity of studios? Yeah, so one of the things I was focused on during the last few months was building the partner program. We are quite overwhelmed with the interest. We, we got, since mid-June, we got easily over 50 applications from companies and it's UK, uh, Germany, Spain, uh, United States, Thailand, it's all over the world. So, and I, one of the things I, uh, that I want to work uh, uh, on with the partners and the program is creating case studies because we have really a couple of uh, really good and big projects that could be advertised more and could help convince uh, businesses to use um, cities for their websites. So yeah, we, we will definitely, there is Rees, there is Hypebeast, uh, there is uh, the must-have pop sugar uh, platform, there is of course Best Value from Romania. Uh, I, I hope Gabby, <laughs> Gabby agrees. And we will definitely create like customer success or case study section on our website. Uh, in the future. 
Okay, productive B2B shops with Sirius. Yeah, as uh, I see a lot of discussions about B2B, um, and uh, I see there's big interest from the community. It's a very interesting topic for me as well, because I think Sirius fits B2B segments uh, really well. Like, it's quite difficult to build a, a like, a ready to use B2B platform, because most of B2B projects um, are like in 50% they are custom, custom pricing, custom promotions, uh, custom um, organization and customer management, integrations and so on. So there's, I would risk saying that 50% of every B2B project is custom in a way. But I think there are a couple of things that we could do to make Silius uh, more suitable for B2B. I know there are like, uh, I think, um, I'm not sure if I pronounced this name right, but I think havep.com. It's on a showcase. This is a pretty cool B2B example um, that is actually built with Drupal 8 and Silius. So the whole website is rendered with Drupal 8, but they talk to API um, to place the B2B orders. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely interested, uh, but after the stable release to, to gather uh, people in the community who are interested in B2B and see what we can do uh, about the B2B support. Um, okay, Antonio, nice to see you here. Um, stable release, what's the plan for marketing Silius and how to populate it with end users, clients? Well, I think the first good step is to finally release the stable version. I think that was one of the major factors that was blocking, um, that was blocking a lot of customers. Um, like they basically didn't want to risk working with beta or alpha software. And uh, as you know, because you have been with us since well, 2011 or 12, or maybe early, um, Sirius has been in development for quite some time. But the actual platform that we have right now, the one that we release, I would say we started a big rewrite, um, big rewrite end of 2015. So it's in in a way it's a uh, it's a completely new platform built on all the experience that we had before. Um, in terms of marketing, I put uh, high hopes in the partner program because uh, I think if we join forces. Um, with uh, a lot of agencies and we work in a more structured way um, then we can promote uh, Sirius more efficiently at especially at business conferences uh, by doing uh, customer case studies we definitely want to do more uh, live streams webinars and all these kind of uh, a bit more interactive uh, introductions for developers I've seen the questions that someone asked about uh, can be university so I was lucky to work with Ryan uh, at Canopy Labs and I remember he said that he waits for the stable release and then we can talk about doing tutorials. So I will definitely drop him an email uh, after uh, stable is out and hopefully we can, we can do something uh, like this. Um, okay. Um, Thank you, Rakesh. That's that's really cool uh, to hear. Uh, do we plan to hire freelancers in the main core development team? No, we actually want to. We definitely want to expand our, our company development team because of the um, our plans for future products and uh, better support for Silius, which is like one of the one of one of, one of the things that is uh, blocking Silius. Let's say. Um, in terms of adoption by bigger companies is that basically we are we as a company are too small to support them we get really a lot of requests for projects for uh, support for consulting and it's it's difficult for us to handle um, it right now so we will be expanding our uh, internal team but in terms of the open source core team we actually want to do it a bit differently because currently the core team is uh, is 100% Sirius company employees and we want to bring on board some people from the community. You'll definitely hear more about this um, after the stable release. Uh, we wanted to do it uh, even earlier, a couple of months ago, there was a discussion, uh, internal discussion that we definitely need to bring more people to the core team outside of the company. But it was it, it was crazy busy time for us um, uh, working towards the stable, so we plan to we plan to uh, 
um, invite some of community members to the core team after the release. Yeah, um, yeah. In terms of B two B and um, virtual non physical products, uh, we did some improvements in the core. Uh, it's not like full download support or anything like that, um, but at least we can skip shipping and mark a product as virtual. So that's uh, so that's a bit better. Um, yeah, upgrading from 0 0.19 to 1.0 will be interesting experience because 0 0.19 is our last version that still has two administration panels. That is pretty funny, funny right? Um, we, we developed a couple of versions which had the new admin panel and the old one to support early adopters. Um, okay, multi-store. Uh, multi-store support and this is super interesting for uh, us and this is also connected I think I can already safely say that don't it's, it's not official announcement but um, one of our plans for uh, the, our future products as a company is connected to multi-vendor and marketplace because we see a lot of interest and we also think that Silius is um, is quite uh, quite good for uh, such products. These are also very custom tailored projects with a lot of customizations, integrations. Uh, they need to be fast. They um, need to be um, adaptable. So we will be working on that aspect as well. Uh, but uh, we will definitely announce more information about this after stable release. Uh, we don't want to obviously change Silius itself. To, to a marketplace platform, anything like that. It will be most likely with like specific edition or some dedicated plugins to make it, uh, it multi-vendor. The thing with marketplaces is they are very different. They're like uh, services marketplaces where you can uh, hire a pet sitter, you can rent a room uh, like Airbnb, um, rent a car like Uber and so on. So there are very, a lot of different scenarios for marketplace applications, uh, but we'll try to to provide some uh, good solution for that as well. Yes, that's that's the website I've meant. Uh, I'm I'm probably behind uh, all the comments, so I'm trying to answer one by one. Uh, yes, that's the example for BTB. What recommendations do you have for those running old versions to to one? Hmm. It it depends. Um, if there was not many customizations to migrate, I would suggest to basically start because it's not like everything is uh, if everything is totally broken. We did a lot of changes uh, from like if we talk about like 0 0.15, 0 0.16 to 1.0, not beta to 1.0 or something like that. But for these upgrades, um, we will. Uh, we usually recommend basically starting a new Silius standard project from scratch and migrating the templates. The templates are, maybe the names has cha have changed, but usually the data, the data that you uh, have access to is usually uh, still the same and compatible, backwards compatible. So for smaller uh, projects with a few customizations, I would say start a new project. For bigger ones, like best value, for example, um, yeah, it's uh, it 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 also depends. That would require a deeper uh, a bit deeper look uh, because I know you guys have a lot of uh, custom stuff, and um, yeah, I think it's it's uh, it's something for <laughs> for a consulting session or a meeting <laughs> and not live stream. Um, why and when it is better to use solutions instead of existing solutions? Like I said, for medium and bigger projects that have the budget and time to develop a couple of things and want tailored experience, want custom front-end, uh, want, uh, want to have full control over the uh, store, how it looks and feels. Uh, for smaller projects, I would say it's, it's also fine if you are a freelance developer or agency that has a team that just hates working with existing legacy solutions and is okay with developing some stuff uh, on your own. Uh, because we don't have that many plugins, like it's for a small website, it's probably much faster and cheaper to just spin up new WordPress instance, uh, add WooCommerce, add some plugins, uh, 
and go live or use Shopify. Um, and um, so definitely for, uh, for medium and bigger projects which have development teams, uh, which uh, want to do testing, which want to deploy to cloud, which uh, want to integrate with um, ERPs, CRMs and external systems. Also, uh, we recently released this plugin. Uh, <laughs> we, we released this plugin that also allows you to build your front end with Vue.js, React or whatever. So that's also, I think, quite interesting. Um, Okay, okay. I need to I need to hold the scroll to read the questions. Um, what's the difference between Silius order and Silius order checkout state machine graphs? So basically, Silius order is like the main uh, main state machine graph, and it defines whether it's a cart or a new order, or if the order is already fulfilled and closed. And order checkout state machine is specifically for checkout. So you start with cart, then you can have shipping selected, payment selected, and completed checkout. So we separated these. So if you want to customize the checkout flow, you actually reconfigure the Silius order checkout state machine and leave uh, the Silius order graph intact. Um, the state machines that we provide out of the box are like sensible defaults. It's something that we um, discussed with the community and iterated on a bit it's it's just basic flow but basic business flows that fit uh, standard e-commerce scenario but from what i've seen like 80 percent of projects customize them anyway so usually you just override the checkout you override the state machines thank you nick and good to see you uh, good to see you here i really appreciate your support Uh, is my mom and sister website running Silis 1.0? Uh, no, the <laughs> uh, we were importing cosmetics from a French supplier and from what I remember they started selling directly in Poland uh, so it was very difficult to compete so the business actually was shut down after I think one, one and a half year or something like that so I was left with the name and the code uh, of the platform and that's what I used for future Silis um, for future studies projects. Is, is Camille <laughs> Bribe able to, for faster reviewing pull request? I think he's still pretty fast. So, but you can try. <laughs> you can try. What's the current state of Silius community? Do you know about people working on this framework that gather together, work together, have presentations? So it, yes, yeah. So uh, it's uh, the last few months been uh, really exciting. We had first uh, Silius hackathon in Berlin. It was organized by Votum uh, agency from Berlin, and uh, we have an actually next hackathon in Germany. Our entire team is going to uh, Nuremberg. Um, in mid-October. Uh, it is organized by Solution Drive, also very cool guys uh, from Germany. Uh, we had, actually it was second Silius Croatia meetup um, in Zagreb. It was awesome and thank you guys for organizing it. Um, in, in I think two weeks or something like that, there is a meetup, Silius meetup in Madrid, organized by uh, the Cocktail uh, Agency. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, things going on uh, in terms of community and we see some meetups. I hope there will be more after the stable release and one of our uh, one, uh, big part of our marketing strategy is, support, is to support such events. We already support them trying to help, uh, help promoting these events, um, go to these events <laughs> as a core team and so on. But we plan to do a lot more um, after the stable release. Um, and hopefully more meetups like this um, appear. Um, another way where you can uh, interact and see our community is a Slack channel. It's, um, it's excellent. Uh, I think we, we launched 
we launched it in December and we have over 700 people there. Um, so there's a lot of discussions every day. I remember that when we started the channel, initially it was us providing support and answering questions. Now there's a couple of uh, very, very active uh, contributors. Uh, I really appreciate all the help that uh, they provide to our fellow community members. I've seen people deciding to use Sidious thanks to the support they got on Slack. So, And there are like, I recently set up a B2B channel on Slack. So it's also a good place to, to discuss B2B and so on. And if you want to organize a meetup anywhere in the world, uh, just let us know and we will do our best to support it. I know that when Timek hears that, he's scared because we have so much work uh, with marketing and there is pretty much just one guy and me uh, doing that. But we plan to expand the team and do more about it. Mm, okay, let me, let me scroll. It's actually a pretty fun thing, this live stream to do. Will there be still this enterprise version or it's too early to talk about it? I think it's too early uh, to talk about specifics. Um, we don't plan any like B2C enterprise version in a model um, like Magenta has, for example. Um, but what can I say already is it the end, we definitely plan to introduce like paid and licensed uh, version of Silius, but that would be uh, something more specific, like perhaps this marketplace thing. But uh, we plan to make uh, the pricing reasonable and and also include support, official support, updates and everything related to this uh, platform. And the reason to do it is basically our current revenues are from consulting, training and um, development, which are difficult to scale basically. It's difficult for us to focus on Silius and on the community well, we constantly need to do projects, development projects. It's, I think it's good. It's like part of our eat your own dog food strategy to make Silius uh, better. But, um, but yeah, it's basically that doesn't allow us to focus on Silius, uh, on the open source part of Silius and community as, uh, as well as we would like. Um, yeah, we are also excited about the API approach. I think it's I think it's a lot of uh, I think that's the future of uh, e-commerce uh, development. It's very new approach. Um, it's very new approach, and but I think in the near future, most of modern e-commerce websites were, will be built uh, like this. Yeah, and one of um, one of the reasons, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm referring to, to John right now, um, that it's very difficult if you have B2, if you have uh, enterprise and committee version, it's very difficult business-wise to decide like, should this feature go to the main version or should this uh, feature go to the paid version and so on. You're kind of competing with yourself. So that's why for our products, we are thinking about something that is not competing with Silus itself, something that is targeting uh, perhaps a new emerging and exciting market like marketplaces and so on. So we can keep the open source version free and available to everyone and develop it as an e-commerce framework. Um, Antonio, is there any stats of uh, how many projects are running Silus at the moment? Um, I think since beta one, we uh, introduced update notifications in the admin. These update notifications also track uh, Silius websites. I think we have easily around 3000 websites recorded in the system. Not all of them are production, of course, uh, but I, I've been recently doing some uh, research um, using build with, I contacted the build with calm guys. Uh, and help them improve the algorithm to detect Silius better. So on build with and a couple of other uh, analytic tools we have around, they detected so far and it's increasing every week. They detected around 300 uh, websites. I think I would estimate in total, uh, we would have something around one, one and a half thousand websites live on, on uh, all Silius versions. <coughs> 
What about swag? <laughs> what about swag? Yeah, as you can see, we ordered some t-shirts recently. We plan to order more and we will be definitely sending out some swag to, uh, to the community meetups and, um, and to our partners. We will also give it away at conferences and so on. Um, someone recently, I think it was Nick, asked about store with still use swag. Uh, there will be one, but right now we are focused on, on the software itself, but we will definitely think about it and give the ability to, to purchase something and support the project. Do you plan to do B2B marketplace or something like B2B extension? Yeah, so like I said, with B2B, that's still undecided. We need to, after the stable release, uh, I'll talk with the community and see what we can do and what should we do uh, regarding B2B support uh, for Silius. Um, I think it's totally possible and I've seen some projects done uh, for B2B. We are doing a B2B project ourselves right now, um, here internally, uh, a commercial project. Um, and um, yeah, but for the marketplace, like I said, this is definitely on our radar for a uh, near future. We'll be announcing more after the stable release. Yeah, so, uh, hi Richard, nice to see you here, and thanks for the question. Well, with the individual bundles, that's quite interesting, because the original idea was that the UI bundle that we have, the UI bundle, I'm not sure if many people know about it, but uh, this UI bundle was supposed to be like a toolkit to easily create admin, um, admin for individual bundles. So let's say that, like in your case, you use promotion bundle, and you want to have an admin. Uh, unfortunately, we, we didn't spend enough time on the UI bundle to, to maybe, I think it, it will work, but it's not documented and we didn't try it properly. Uh, but the idea, and um, I think uh, the idea for the future is to, uh, uh, so, uh, to document it and uh, do a couple of small decoupling fixes so that you can install promotion bundle, then drop in UI bundle and quickly build admin interface with that using resource and read, of course. Um, yeah, an alternative would be, uh, would be the API. Um, would be the API. And in terms of uh, experimental features, um, I think we do we do a lot of uh, we will do uh, a lot of experiments uh, as plugins. One of them is the Sirius Shop API plugin, and we seriously consider adding it to the core in uh, perhaps version one point one or one one point two after it was battle tested. So we will try to do some experiments outside of the main uh, platform and integrate them when uh, they're ready. So uh, what platform will the silly swag store be on? And here it's interesting because uh, I think it, uh, I'm not sure if that's proper thing to say. Maybe, maybe this will be like the, uh, the hit of this live stream, but uh, when I think about this basic swag store with just some t-shirts, cups, uh, I'm seriously considering to outsource it to to some agency and do it on whatever they want, WordPress or whatever, because we don't want to use our, our resources on building that. Um, but we'll see. What I can say is definitely our future marketplace with plugins and teams, this will be built on uh, Celius, definitely, especially if there's a marketplace. Do you have any plans in the coupling admin bundle from core so it can be used separately? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I said about UI bundle. That was the idea behind UI bundle, so you can use it um, uh, as an alternative, together with greed and resource as an alternative to easy, mad, ad, easy admin or Sonata. The thing is we wanted to focus on the on Silus as a platform itself um, and as a set of e-commerce components. So decoupling these, um, which are essentially Symfony components was like second priority, but we'll definitely have a look at it in future versions and decouple it better. 
What tips can you give for beginning with Behat and PHP Spark and Silius? Um, well, definitely checking out uh, our BDD guide, checking out Behat documentation, of course, and PHP Spark. Um, trying to dig into Silius code base, especially the tests, and maybe starting from the base, um, uh, as, uh, like uh, the, the more basic specifications for some simpler uh, classes. And yeah, just Practicing. I mean, for us, it took a long, long ride to get PHP spec and be had properly. And we already see some improve, some possible improvements. Actually, at some point, we we pretty much rewritten our whole be had suit from scratch because we were using it in the old-fashioned way. Uh, my tip, especially with be had, would be to focus uh, on the scenarios so that they are actual business. Um, like business uh, user stories written with business language without UI uh, details, without actually considering the, what, what will be the, the, the user interface of the application. And um, yeah, it's and not you and avoiding to use it for the most basic uh, use cases or some very simple logic, it's probably not efficient. Um, uh, another thing that is a uh, possible improvement to Silus as well is currently our uh, Behat scenarios can run against uh, UI or database. So they are kind of like integration tests for the database as well. But a uh, very good alternative is, right, um, is um, testing with Behat only on the domain level without touching the UI or without touching uh, the database or anything. It's much faster and much more efficient and easier to write. But this also requires that your domain code is, is proper. What's my personal expectation for Solute by the end of the year and for next year? So the next steps for us is releasing the stable version, kickstarting the, um, kick the partner program. Um, that's our main goals for this year and uh, getting uh, our first investment round because so far we were uh, completely self-funded. Um, and to support this growing community and to provide commercial support for companies who want to use this for the products, we definitely need to grow um, on pretty much every uh, area. So that's our goals for this year. And uh, next year we want to throw a nice party. So organize the first Silus Con conference. I think we have, uh, we have built a big enough community to, to throw a nice party. We don't know where it will happen yet. Uh, probably some big city which is well connected to airports. Uh, but I'm sure that with support of our partners, we can uh, organize a really cool conference that will um, um, that will have uh, speakers from both Silius and Symphony community. I think it can be a very interesting uh, schedule. Yeah, so I think I think I finally made it to the to the end of. Comments. Did did I miss any question? Yeah, you can you can give me some feedback about how do you like such live stream or Q and A. It would be interesting. Uh, it's it is fun for me, so we would be probably happy to organize more of these. Um, not only with me, but other team members. Uh, we definitely stream. Uh, the, the release next Wednesday, so uh, so you can already have an eye on our Facebook and be with us when we type the one zero release. Yeah, it would be definitely cool to to have a hackathon in Paris. Uh, obviously, Silius uh, community is quite strong in France because Symphony is strong in France. Um, so yeah. If, if we have anyone interested in organizing uh, <laughs> Paris, Malaga, okay, that, <laughs> that will be fun. Uh, then you can just drop us an email and uh, we, can, uh, we can support you with some tips and uh, how to organize such meetup and send you some swag and also um, um, help you with marketing of the event by promoting in on our social media channels, Slack and so on, definitely. 
and uh, I can't promise because it's it's getting crazy for us with the travel but uh, yeah we we travel a lot recently so maybe we even joined Yeah, it's, I, I like it as well because I can uh, instantly answer some questions and uh, interact more directly with, with you guys. Um, I try to stay on Slack um, and, and try to keep up with what is going on on Slack, but it's very difficult for me. It's, um, yeah, it's quite, quite busy, uh, busy time for Solus. Okay, do you have any more questions? We have like 15 minutes, 14 minutes left. I can show you some, some of our office if you want. Just let me know in comments. That's awesome to hear, John. Thanks. Thanks and good luck with your shop. I know I'm I need I need to reply to your email, but it's it's crazy. I, I used to have inbox zero a couple of weeks ago, but now it's not possible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let me show you the office then. So so the problem with the live stream is that we have a little delay, so I need to switch my screen. That's our meeting room. This is where a lot of discussions happen and brainstorms and stuff like that. We have a nice logo. So going here, it's, it's our new uh, roll-up, the first e-commerce framework for tailored e-commerce solutions. We did that for PHP Airs conference that we were at last Saturday. So <laughs> I see everyone in the, in the office is stressed now. So that's my, my small cozy office with a whiteboard, some memories from all the conferences. We also have a small chill room where there is more of some our, our first practice with event storming. Some couches to sit on, balloons from the conference. So it's it's full release mode right now, so it's a bit messy. And that's our main main room. So we basically yeah, that's the team. You can say hi. <laughs> yeah, so basically our office is currently in like apartment building so we eat next to the place where we work so here we have Magdan Grzesiu, Mateusz, Łukasz, Arek, Timek who is like one man, one man marketing department and this is Kamil's place but Kamil is working remotely for this week from his hometown so yeah that's our space we also have a nice balcony so you can get some fresh air when there's too much coding and play some chess like guys are crazy about chess they play it constantly to diffuse so yeah that's our quite small but feels like home office right <laughs> okay now let me see the comments I'm not sure if what if it was <laughs> yeah so we are a small company we're currently eight people uh, we want to expand uh, with more developers and marketing and everything but yeah currently we are uh, eight people so we don't have really departments there's just one serious department <laughs>
how many deaths we have uh five wait uh five developers right now yeah five developers it took me a while to count because uh Jesse joined us this week and uh i'm also in talks with some developers uh, new developers that will join our team but we need to change the office yeah that's that's the plan probably for early next year So, any more questions? Yeah, so <laughs> the guys now set up a live chess game so you can watch <laughs> watch uh, them playing live on the Lee Chess. Fun thing, the uh, Lee Chess, I'm not sure if I pronounced it right, but the Lee Chess uh, org website was one of the first big Symfony, uh, Symfony applications. Uh, it is now rewritten uh, to, if I recall correctly, to uh, not Java, but this trendy, trendy Java uh, alternative. I totally forgot the name right now. How many developers do I plan to hire? As many as possible. <laughs> No, but we, we have some we have some bold bold plans in terms of expanding our development team. We would like to create a couple of teams actually. How yes, Scala, that's correct. I was looking for that word. Thank you, Mira, and good to see you here. Um, so how do you manage to recruit good developers? Um, you know, most of people here. Uh, with some of them, I started working in 2014 when uh, we co-founded the company, the agency, and um, others joined in 2015. And uh, as this was uh, early, very early for us in terms of the business side of things, like Silius was already there as a small community, but that was like actually the first uh, business. Um, the, the, the beginning of the of building an actual company. So uh, some of the developers were my high school friends, uh, and we basically that went to the university, technical university, and we trained them. So our entire team uh, was was trained, and it took us a bit um, to 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 transfer the knowledge uh, about Symfony and so on. But uh, yeah. And otherwise, but if uh, what what's our strategy for hiring right now? Uh, definitely all kinds of community events like meetups. Uh, like when you go to a meetup, you get the one percent most passionate people in the industry. Um, so yeah, instead of using uh, like recruiting agencies, which is like the most boring way, um, we plan to be uh, more visible on conferences like. I keep my fingers crossed because when we were at the at this Saturday uh, event in Poznan at PHPRS, there was yeah, cup at least couple of people who asked, "Do we hire?" Because it's, I think it's uh, in Poland, especially it's um, in a sense it's quite unique what we do in terms of open source and Symfony and so on. So I, I hope uh, I have my highs, uh, I have I have my hope uh, very high uh, for hiring good devs. Uh, we consider hiring remotely. Uh, it's like uh, with junior devs, I don't believe it works uh, like mentoring remotely. This definitely doesn't work, so we want to have them in office. But with some more experienced uh, developers, we also consider hiring remotely, uh, not only from Poland. Do we plan template marketplace? Uh, yes. So we last week we launched um, plugin and bundle listing. There is also a team section. It is empty right now. But if you would like to create a team for Silius, then just follow our docs, give it a try, and uh, you can drop, on us, drop us an email and uh, we can uh, help you a bit with creating the team uh, by giving some suggestions. It's not a marketplace. You, don't, you can't currently sell on it. You can just get listed and it's only free plugins and free uh, teams. 
but we definitely in the future, uh, probably early next year, we would uh, love to have a fully featured marketplace. This one running on Silis, of course, where you can also sell uh, paid plugins, paid themes, and so on. Hi, Dimitris, and thank you. Yeah, four years ago was a crazy long time ago. It was, it was, I mean, it was the same spirit but different code. <laughs> now it's now it's much better, I think. And uh, the base is Symphony three point three. So um, the latest version of, uh, of Symphony, as our release is happening next week, and Symphony four is releasing in November. We we release on the earlier version, the version three. But we will definitely add support for Symphony 4 as well. Um, we like I started uh, Silius bundles um, in the early it was pre-alpha days of Symphony. The Symphony repository was still hosted on the Fabian's uh, account on GitHub, not on the official one. It was public, but yeah, it was like still uh, like extremely under extreme development. And we have been following Symphony since then with every single upgrade, so we, we plan to definitely continue that. Yeah, you'll be able to port to Symphony 4. Um, from what I've seen, the only uh, possible problem for us with upgrading will be the change project structure. And uh, yeah, pretty much it. But I'm, I'm sure we'll figure out something and make it work. Okay, we have like last two minutes. Do you have any more questions? Thank you for all the questions so far. It was quite interesting experience for me. I, I, I had the opportunity to talk in front of a couple of hundred or even thousand people in a conference room. Uh, but this is my like first live stream, so it's quite interesting uh, experience. Do we use something like Agile? Yeah, definitely. Uh, when we started the main rewrite of um, um, of Silius, end of 2015, we used full Scrum uh, methodology. Uh, it was constantly evolving and still is constantly evolving. Uh, but I think Alpha 1 was a result of, I don't know, 14 or 15 sprints. So yeah, definitely. Thank you, thank you. It's very nice to see your support, guys. Thank you, it's really nice. It's really motivating to hear uh, that you are happy with uh, with Silius. I remember that on, on many occasions, on my worst days, like without motivation to work, I, I received a couple of uh, nice emails or messages and it's really, uh, really helping to, to keep up uh, the work, so thanks. Okay, good luck with your stable release, that's probably exciting. Thank you as well, John, and yeah, good luck with your shop as well. Yeah, so I'll be going, guys. Thank you so much for uh, joining me on this live stream. It was real fun, and I'm like 100% sure we do it again. Uh, we didn't promote it much, so it probably didn't reach entire Silius community, but I'm still very happy to see uh, so many people here. And thank you for all nice words, and see you on GitHub and Slack. Hey Arno, good to see you, man. <laughs> I, I, need to, I need to visit you guys, definitely. See you, bye-bye. Thanks.